We just pulled into the 380 in Iowa. We're meeting Lee here to put feeders up. We're gonna go ahead and drive around and change camera cards on these six or seven cameras we put on this side of the farm about 10 days ago. Another little addition, we're in the middle of purchasing the 20 acres, a nice little house that borders this 380 over here, which is, that's kind of what we were missing was like a place to stay on this sizable farm. We just put that last uh, piece of the puzzle together and this 20 has got a, a little top that goes off of our, what's now tillable that I would imagine we're gonna open this gate right here between these fences and pull some of these trees and probably try to get this in green so that we've got a green to grain with a gate opening. Putting food on here, not even, we haven't even put any of our strategy stuff in place yet, but just adding the food has transformed this place into dynamite hunting piece. We're at our first camera. Big trail coming out of here. Bobby and I cut this fence right here on this pinch point in this field. We got a tree stand location marked over here with a big S on the tree. In these key areas, we went ahead and cut the fence between these three or four posts and made 40 or 50 foot opening in the fence. And then all of a sudden, you know, these deer are now, it's only been cut for about three weeks. And look at the trail already coming out of here. The first part of this process was we let the pasture get tall enough to where it had some good tonnage of grass and stuff in it. And we had our, our farmer come in and actually bale it and leave us these bales all over the farm. You know, you're gonna run in situations late season over here where you're gonna end up with 50 deer in a bean field. And if your target buck hasn't come out, you gotta find a way to get out of there without busting those deer. We use these bales and stack them all up and row them so that we can get in out of here without busting a deer. These were those three fingered coves that are on the far side of this piece. We had talked about several different options with these, staggering food, doing warm season grasses. We went ahead and planted them in beans because one, that's gonna give us more tonnage over here, and two, they're gonna prep it for next year for whatever somebody wants to do with it. This six foot fence comes all along next to the truck right here and it ends right there. And as soon as it ends, there's just a huge trail that goes down into the creek bottom. We got a camera right here. So we keep talking about the fences in here. There's a really good view of an eight or a six foot woven wire fence and it's everywhere in here. I don't know why they did that, but it's good for us because it really funnels the deer traffic. And then here you got this giant branch. It's gonna be a huge scrape. There's a big hole in the fence right here, same end of the bean field. And then it goes, the trail goes in here and there's two great big drainage ravines. And uh, this is one of the trees that Bobby and I marked in here for a definite stand location because of what this fence does and how the terrain works. Just a no brainer during the rut right here. Real easy access too. So again, fences, stout fences come right down through here and look at the gap in that corner. Just powder coming out of here. It's Blitz three ways when it gets back here. Turkey sign all up and down at deer tracks. Looks like the cows are still in here on this one, man. It's crazy corner. Huntable trees on both sides. And I think really we should probably put the feeder back in here. It's gonna keep these deer here back in this side. And then this is probably where we'll leave standing beans. So, you know, right before we hunt at late season, we'll get the, get the feeder moved out of here in the appropriate time to be legal and then these deer are held here all year long, right here where we want them. All right. Well, now it's time for the fun, the fun part, seeing what you got here. And it's, it's, a, it's amazing how when you get some feed going, even at home, farms that we've had for 20 years, just how many more keep coming every year. Guarantee it, but it's here now, compared with here in November, it'll be changing dramatically. Normally on a new farm like this, Deer aren't used to feeders. It'll take them a little bit to get to it. You'll see some come around it and they'll be a little spooky of it first, but then once they get on it, they're on it. But you know, on farms that we've had for 20 years, they're used to those feeders there. As soon as you put one out, bam, they'll be right on it. So new ones like this, I just put a little on there. For right now, I'll just put it, have it open for just a few seconds at a time. And uh, we'll see if it starts piling up. If there's not enough deer even to eat that, then we'll come and slow it down or 
whatever. But uh, you know, the idea is to feed the the deer and not the raccoons. This is a, a mix of the analogic basements, which is these is the pellets, but that's what has all the EHD fighting stuff and everything in that. And so you want to eat as much of that as you can. So we mix it with corn, roasted soybean. These are all these soybeans are roasted, so it gets all the moisture out of them, so they won't you know rot or anything like that. And each time of the year, the quantity of each one of those will change. We're over here on the south side of the 380. Got a camera in this little little pinch in the bean field here. This little point in this little grassy area right here might be a good spot for the feeder. This is just a really good, you know, pinch point, high congregation spot. It's way off the road. You can't see it from anywhere. Beans are doing awesome. Man, what a killer pinch. I mean, look, you got huntable tree there, huntable tree there for either wind. We came in, stopped at the pinch point down there and messed with our camera, talked about putting the feeder in here, slammed the doors, got back in, drove back down the same edge we just came down and I just happened to catch a little piece of like orange in there. I'm like, oh, there's a deer. And we looked out the window and there was two bucks bedded right off the field edge. One of them was like 150 inch 10. The other one was a smaller buck. And when we stopped, that deer just lowered his head and tilted his rack and like tried to hide himself. He was like 15 yards off the edge of the field. That was pretty cool. We're back in this little cove. You can see those little pinch point there and there's this little cove of beans. Neighbor's fence line there, that's just pasture and alfalfa on that side. So we've already taken some timber out of this one and taken some spots up and built some bedding areas. So we widened this road. It kind of goes into the middle of the farm. Beans are all getting hit pretty good. We're taking some trees off these, the north end of this piece. And that was the last couple piles of logs that we had laid out. And then we're gonna move over to the 160, start getting some of those road systems laid out, some of the bedding areas built, some of those south facing hills thickened up and cut hard, which is what we did over here. And this is just the last little bit of logs getting pulled out of here before we send a dozer back through here and groom all these roads, get all these crossings fixed and get it, you know, whipped into the finished product. Next, we'll be bringing blinds over. We'll start getting ground ripped here for turnip plots, and it's, it's getting ready to get serious here now. But I'm glad to see these guys here getting those out of there because that was one of the coves that we're going to plant in. Feeder number two for the day is fill that thing up and leave it for, depending on how long you want to set it for, it can be six months. You know, it can last you the whole summer, basically. But uh, for me, it, you know, we have a lot of deer on them, I heard so. You know, I usually about once every month or month and a half or something like that. But it's ideal for some, for people that don't live around close or out of state or whatever, you come fill the thing up and it, you know, it can last you months. That's a pretty good deer. That's pretty yeah, good. that's a good one right there. Double forks. Yeah. Cool looking deer. Yeah. Yeah, already there's enough pictures right now that if somebody showed to me, I'd be like, Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Good. It doesn't matter what's there now. We're gonna. Doesn't no, matter if there's yeah. a deer on it or not. But you just see the genetic, the splits, and the six by five. It's a good start for for, being for a, this one to have that many first camera big check. frames and forks and stuff. Just finished over there on our other farm, and we're like, man, we got one hour of daylight. Let's try to get these other cameras pulled. We're just pulling in here right at prime time deer right here coming up. Man, hey, pulling in here in prime time, but man, there was a big deer. I don't know how big he was coming out of this little low spot. There's deer running this way. There was three bucks at the gate coming in. There's does standing all over the place. It's so secluded back in there and hasn't been food for a long time. It's been CRP. And we get this food put back in here and they're just leveling the beans, just relentless. We got these in a little late and that didn't help either, but 
I mean, you could look right down the rows and they're all just flat being chewed off. Driving all along the base of this south facing hillside. All warm season grasses, and cedars and saplings and stuff. It's just so cool. This really, really wicked old gate opening that goes up to the top to a hidden field. And it comes off this big timber, crosses the creek, comes through this gate, and then up across this south facing grass hillside and then into our food. So it's like the perfect transition spot here. one had the most videos 234 videos coming around the outside corner of this fence and there's a fence that comes across here and stops makes like a 50 yard gap right here and it's way back in the, the back part of the farm so it makes sense that there's a lot of traffic back here but I'm gonna go to Lee's here real quick before it gets too late and just check a couple of these cards and get on out of here bad start huh Yeah, the side by side three and four. And that's a good deer right there, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, that one could be 170 inch deer this year. I mean, now, you know. Yeah, actually, he's going to be. Yeah. Gosh. All right, well. Not I mean, a bad first yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, a good start to. For not really having Yeah, any. just for just throwing them out last week, just throwing a few cameras out. Yeah, I mean, on the south side of the other farm, on 220 acres, we had three cameras. We got, right. We got how many deer? I know. I mean, you know, and then on, another five cameras on this 220. I mean, not no history, no place to put them, just kind of. Right, first just round. popping them out. Yeah, just sticking them out someplace. 